Welcome to the Women Living Well After 50 podcast. I'm Sue Long Carrick and I'm passionate about inspiring, motivating, supporting and informing women over 50 to embrace this exciting time of life. Health and wellness in mind, body and spirit are the foundations for living well, but there is so much more to a life well lived. Each week through conversations with my guests, I'll be presenting topics that will help us all to live well and enjoy life. So join me as we discover new ways to become women living well after 50. Are you ready to start living? What are you waiting for? Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of the Women Living Well After 50 podcast. I'm Sue Long Carrick and I'm just delighted to have you join me today in a quest for us all to the living life our way and living well. Now, today I want to talk about the monkey mind. I don't know if you've heard about it before, you may have, but um, I know that I definitely have one. So today I want to share my strategies on how I tame my monkey mind. It's Mental Health Month in the US And uh, although I live in Australia, I really think the focus on mental health and well-being should be every day and part of a healthy lifestyle. And I'm sure you would agree. Now, sometimes life can be a struggle, can't it? Especially when our monkey mind is in full throttle. Have you ever heard of the term monkey mind? And as I mentioned, I know I have one. Well, monkey mind is a Buddhist terminology, and it means that our mind is unsettled, restless, confused, and indecisive. It's a mind that refuses to be quiet and concentrated, and a mind that has a thousand thoughts racing through it. Now, the Buddha who uh, actually termed the phrase monkey mind used the following analogy to describe Capatita, which is restless, agitated, incessant movement of the mind. Are you getting the idea? Do you think you feel that way? Anyway, the Buddha said, just as a monkey swinging through the trees grabs one branch and lets go of it to seize another, so too that which is called thought, mind or consciousness arises and disappears continually both day and night. That means our mind's just racing. It never turns off and it really can be unhealthy to have that monkey mind mentality because it means that we can't relax. It means that we're, our sleep is affected and uh, we're just not being able to live a healthy lifestyle. Now, my monkey mind's been overdrive lately. I've been coping with life, which has recently been a bit of a roller coaster ride. Um, lots of things happening in our life at the moment. Some have been good, some not so good, but all needing my focus and attention. So you can imagine that life can um, just take over and it's hard to stop our mind. So what are some strategies that I use to calm my monkey mind? Now, firstly, I want to say that I'm not a medical expert. I'm not a psychological expert or a professional in that field, in the area of mental health. I'm sharing what works for me. And if you are struggling, I would encourage you to reach out for professional help. In Australia, we have Lifeline, which is... uh, you can ring on 131114 if you really feel that you need that professional help. So let's get back to the strategies that I use. When we're feeling overwhelmed and the monkey is swinging from branch to branch, it can almost be impossible to function and think clearly. We start to feel anxious, it's difficult to complete tasks, and that's our mind telling us that we need to stop. Now, if we ignore the messages our mind is sending, we'll start receiving messages from our bodies as signs manifest themselves, and this can lead to illness. We're not sleeping. We've got aches and pains. Our body is just not feeling good. That's sending the message that, hey, you need to stop and slow down for a while. Just step out of the world. But what can you do when you feel too tired to fight the monkey mind? Now, I could say it was easy, 
but from personal experience, it's not. However, there are some short-term strategies that might help, and I know that they work for me, so that's why I want to share with them with you today. Now, I say short-term because sometimes we've got to work at practising these resources to become a habit, and in the moment, these will bring clarity and calm when you need it. So you've probably heard the list before. A lot of things we hear in uh, social media or in the, in the media, we have heard before, but sometimes it doesn't hurt to have a gentle reminder. Now, the first thing I find is to give myself permission to be less than perfect. How do you feel about that? We set the bar so much higher uh, for ourselves than we do for others, don't we? And uh, I know I do. And we expect more from ourselves. We don't give ourselves um, that leeway. We feel guilty if we say no, or we feel less if we, are, we aren't juggling six balls at once or, you know, whilst hopping on one leg. We need to accept the reality that we aren't perfect and our mental health is more important than trying to please others or aiming to be a multitasker of the year. Now, I used to pride myself on being able to do several things at once, but why? Multitasking is overrated and it really does put that extra pressure on you when you don't need that. So the first thing is give yourself permission not to be perfect and to set boundaries. Now, secondly, it's to prioritise and make a list because we all have things that are happening in our lives. But have you got too much going on? You need to ask yourself the question, is this really necessary or do I really want to do it? So writing a list of all you need or think you need to do is a good idea and a good starting point. Then mark each task out of 10. 10 being the most important and must be done, or more importantly, it brings you joy, so you want to do it. And one being where, well, the world won't end if I don't get this done. Now, in many cases, you can let go of some of the things you've graded as one, because, you know, sometimes letting go is difficult, and that's the most difficult part of the task. But if it's not really that important to you and the world isn't going to end, why is it on your list? Once you've let go, that pressure, that feeling of pressure just seems to lift. So grade and prioritise all the things on your to-do list. Now, another thing that I use is to unplug for a day or two or more. And that's difficult when you have a blog, when you're in social media, when you've got a podcast, all these things, it's very difficult to unplug because, you know, you feel guilty that you're letting your readers or your listeners down. But even in normal life, while social media certainly has its place, it can also be a trigger for stress and, and anxiety and at times an unhealthy habit. How often do you sit there and just scroll mindlessly through the news feed or the Facebook feed or the Instagram feed? You're scrolling through and it, you look up and you've just wasted an hour. You know, as soon as you wake up, you might see what's happening. And it all can, can be a little bit unsettling because, let's face it, most of us put up positive things in our lives, the perfect side of our life, rather than, you know, the not so good things. So we see all these posts going up about what wonderful lives people have. And if we're not feeling good, that can just make us feel worse because we think, oh, our life isn't as good as that, when really that's just, you know, is that reality? It's not. We all have our ups and downs in life. News can be distressing as well. Now, you know, the world, unfortunately, is in a very sad place at the moment. And so you might need to just tune out of the news for a while. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be informed or that you shouldn't be aware of what's happening and, you know, care about what's happening. 
But sometimes if you're finding that it's overwhelming, you need to just stop and turn it off for a little while. So my question to you is, could you unplug from social media and emails and news for at least 24 or 48 hours? Give it a try. You'll find at first it very difficult, but after a little while, you'll feel such a sense of freedom. So unplug for a day or two. Now we need to take time out for mindfulness and meditation. We know that. And you don't really have to do a, um, a full-on meditation. It can only be, it need only be for a full few minutes. But it's um, I think you just need to take that time to stop your mind. And let me tell you that meditation is not necessarily that easy when um, you know, you're trying to switch your mind off. So don't worry about that. Just close your eyes. Just try and calm yourself and uh, put on some music. Perhaps it's calming. And just try and focus on the breath. Um, you know, look out at nature. Take a moment to just be at one with nature. Or perhaps you can just look at a candle, light a candle and just look at the flame for a few moments and be entranced by that and slowly your mind will calm. Now, on Saturday I was having a look out because I live across from the ocean and I looked out and the clouds were heavy and dark and grey, but beyond them there was that light coming through. And it just reminded me that although life can feel grey and overwhelming at times, there's always the light there just waiting for the clouds to pass. So take a moment to be mindful and to meditate. And I found a couple of good books recently, um, which might be helpful. They're tiny, just short books. One is called The Little Book of Meditation, 10 Minutes a Day to More Relaxation, Energy and Creativity. And the other one is The Little Book of Mindfulness, again, with 10 minutes of daily practice. And they're both by Patricia Gollard. So, so um, you can find those on Amazon, but they're just little bite-sized um, books so they don't feel overwhelming and they have some fun and efficient exercises that you can fit into your day to help you with your meditation or to be more mindful. Now, taking a walk in nature is always so relaxing, isn't it? It's good for our physical health, it's good for our mental health, and it's good for the soul. So just even if you have to drive somewhere to be surrounded by nature, make some time to get out there or get out in the garden and just look at the beautiful um, nature that we're surrounded by. Soak it all up and feel that calmness. Now, moving. Moving our body lifts our mood, whether it's a form of traditional exercise or dancing, playing with children or grandchildren, or just moving from one part of the house to another. Um, Harvard Health Publishing have an article, How Simply Moving Benefits Our Mental Health. Now, that suggests that recent studies have shown that the connection between our brain and your body is a two-way street. And that means that movement can change your brain too. So it changes the physiology, even if you just get up and walk into another room. But my advice is to get some exercise, move your body, even if you don't feel like it at the beginning, by the end of it, you're going to feel great. Now, tapping and EFT, which is emotional freedom technique. That's something that my husband actually does. And he is a great believer in that. And um, you can, basically, it's a, a technique where you focus on the current feeling. So you're not shutting what you're feeling out. You, you know, if it's a negative emotion, you're focusing on that. But you're tapping your fingers uh, maybe five to seven times. And you can do them in um, what they call the nine meridian points of the body. But an easy butterfly method is to just cross your arms uh, uh, over your chest and just tap right, left, right, left on your shoulder, just lightly tapping. 
or you could tap your knees or you could just, um, you know, move your feet up and down if you, you know, sitting at a desk and you don't want someone to see you. But it does relax your mind. It, you start to focus on where you're tapping. You acknowledge the feelings that you're having. Why are you having them? Then take a breath and think about, well, is it really that bad? So I will put a link in the show notes to a um, explain what EFT is and some exercises for you that I have found online. But it really does seem to work. I know my husband swears by it. Now, focusing on the breath, I mentioned that as well. There's so many breathing techniques that we can use to calm our mind and, and calm the feelings of anxiety. But a popular one, um, which is known as the relaxing breath, is the 478 breathing technique. So that means you, hold, you inhale deeply for four counts, you hold your breath for seven counts, and you exhale slowly for eight counts till you empty right out of your belly. Now, there's an app, a free app, apparently, that you can use called Breathe, and that will help you um, with different breathing uh, exercises. But whenever you're feeling anxious, whenever your monkey mind is just in overdrive, just do that four, seven, eight. So breathing in for four, holding for seven, and exhaling for eight. Now, a good time to do this is just before bed as well, because that will help you to um, relax your mind and prepare you for sleep. But anytime during the day, if you're feeling stressed, that breathing technique will really help. Now, a couple of other ways that or strategies I use to calm my monkey mind is just go and have some binge watching of your favourite TV series or watch your favourite movie or get lost in your favourite book because, you know, it's something that you'll be enjoying and you will find that the monkey sits back and relaxes and, and watches the movie or reads the book or the TV series with you. So you've stepped out of the world for a while, a couple of hours. Creative pursuits are always helpful. Artwork or if you enjoy cooking and baking, being in the, in the kitchen can help soothe your mind. Kneading dough when you're making bread can have a very therapeutic effect. I've got a couple of friends who turn to baking when they're stressed or their monkey mind is in overdrive. Knitting, crocheting, art or any creative hobby can be wonderful for calming your monkey mind. So have a think about that. Crank up the music, put on your headphones and listen to your favourite music or dance around the room. Now for me, ABBA is always a hit. It's a great mood lifter. I know all the lyrics to the songs and the dances and it just is feel good music. So um, put on something that really is uplifting and uh, just helps you to get those endorphins going in your mind, the happy hormones that will, you know, calm the monkey mind. Now, these are all self-care, but self-care as a whole, you need to set out some time each day to nurture yourself and do things that bring you joy. You might only need 10 minutes to 15 minutes because I realise that life's busy for everyone. But if you can take some time, slot it in like an appointment, like you would if you were going to the doctor or the dentist or you were having a meeting, slot in that time for self-care and say, I've got a meeting with myself and I'm going to do something for myself that brings me joy, that brings me calm and reduces my stress. Now, of course, spending time with children or grandchildren can really help too because they always live in the moment. Um, I spend time with my grandsons every week and they certainly bring joy to me and there's no time for the monkey mind when I'm with them. I rediscover how to 
be curious, how to have fun, and of course their cuddles certainly help. Children are constantly in the moment. Sure, they flip from one thing, from one activity to another. Their attention span probably isn't that great. But at least when they're doing something, they're in that moment. They're not worrying about yesterday, tomorrow, in the afternoon, whatever. They're not even worrying about the long list of to things to do. They are there enjoying what they're doing right there and then. So we can really learn a lot from children. So here are some suggestions for you to try. And as I said, you might have some that you'd like to share with me because uh, I'm, you know, it, this works for me, um, but you might find other things that work for you and I'd love to hear them so I can add them to my list. And what I'd like to leave you is, is what will you do for your mental health and well-being today? What are some things that will bring the light from behind the grey for you? Well, I hope that you have um, found what we've discussed today beneficial to you in helping to calm your monkey mind. And so what I'd like us to do now is to just go to our weekly meditation to reset and refocus for the week ahead and hopefully to uh, take a few moments to calm that monkey mind. So let's go to the meditation. Now, before we start the week, let's take a moment to reset and I'd like us to join in together for a one minute meditation. I'll be including this at the end of every episode of Micro Mondays, just for us to be able to start the week calmly and with focus and looking forward to the week ahead. So I want you to sit in a comfortable position or lie in a comfortable position. I want you to close your eyes. And we're going to take one minute where I want you to just try and clear your mind to prepare for the week ahead. Letting your breath inhale slowly and exhale slowly. Calming the mind, slowing down the breath and focusing on you. Slowly letting your breath come back to normal. Slowly open your eyes and welcome a new day and a new week. And what I'd like to leave you is, is what will you do for your mental health and well-being today? What are some things that will bring the light from behind the grey for you? So have a beautiful day. Take care. And I'll see you in the next episode of the Women Living Well After 50 podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, I'd love you to give me a like or a comment and share it with a friend who you think might benefit from listening to what we've discussed today. And in the meantime, remember to live well, enjoy life, and most of all, be a woman living life your way. Bye for now.